Like the Classic Mini is a notorious hard car to engine swap with those looking for more power. We're here with Steve from Dutchie's Garage to have a look at his Classic Mini with a little something special in the back. So Steve, when you ran out of room in the front end for the power that you're looking to go for, where did you end up going and why did you end up doing this? Well, I guess um, I started off with the original Mini, which had the uh, 1275 in it, and then I um, wanted more power, so I moved to a, uh, a B16, so in the front, so I did another engine swap prior to this one, and uh, that had lots of power, lots of torque steer at the front, and I didn't like the torque steer, and there's a few people in the UK and US have done um, VTEC Minis, so I kind of wanted to move away from what everyone does and um, try to do something different, so this is where... This idea came up, I had Subarus back in the day and I loved the box of sound, so I said, you know what, let's uh, see what I can do about putting the, uh, a boxer into a Mini, so. And clearly not enough room for an EJ in the front of this, so you ended up doing the sensible thing, I guess, and moving to the back, so what's the setup uh, with the engine and drivetrain at the moment? Yeah, so obviously I wanted to have this car engineered, fully road registered, um, so to do that, you can't widen the track too much, you can't extend the front, so had to go in the back. Um, so what I've done is I've taken a uh, 2010 WRX and then put the EJ25 turbo into the back. So essentially a mid-engine um, rear-wheel drive setup in the rear of the car. Yeah. So that's maintaining the Subaru gearbox as well. Any changes there? No, 100%. It's the exact same engine and transmission that came out of the Subaru, five-speed manual. So all I've done is um, remove the center diff, remove the rear tail shaft, etc shorten the gearbox and put a locking spool on it um, that basically turns into two-wheel drive. So the front axles of the Subaru are um, running my rear wheels. And are those just standard front axles and is that enough to handle the kind of power just being sent to two wheels? Uh, no, not standard because all the widths and, uh, are different. So it's all custom axles that I had made originally and um, I actually snapped them at the, one of the drag challenges I did. So uh, I've just had recent ones uh, or new ones made recently and this is probably the second drive I've done with them in. So yeah, they had to be custom made. Yeah. And I want to come back to the engine setup soon, but for now let's just focus on the chassis and what had to be done to you know fit an engine where it originally wasn't. Uh, in terms of modification, fabrication to the chassis, what was the main stuff involved in the rear of the car? Yeah, so basically from the B pillars back, I've had to cut the whole back of the floor out, wheel arches and everything out. And um, I've built in a, uh, a, a box chassis from front to back um, for engineering purposes. It had to be all done that way. So, um, And then I've built a subframe to hold the engine suspension in the rear and in the front all the way through the car so it's um yeah you can basically drop the whole suspension and the the transmission and the engine all in one go so it makes it nice and easy to work on um if you have to get to that point yeah. and you obviously needed a firewall between the cab and now the engine bay yeah so a lot of people think there's no firewall i had a few today say hey we, how'd you get away with this without a firewall it's actually got a glass um, panel in there so there's actually uh, a plate behind the seats it's all firewall and it's sealed all the way through but um, the glass, which is kind of a feature, like a, an R8 type setup where you can look back and have a look at the engine sitting in the seat. So, yeah. Real supercar feel. Yeah, real, yeah, it's kind of that, yeah. I mean, if you've got an engine there, you want to see it. So I didn't want to cover it up. I want to be able to see it myself. Yeah, awesome. And in terms of the actual suspension, everything going on there, that's all completely custom. How did you come up with the design? Um, so it's running uh, Mazda MX-5 NB2. Uh, um, front and rear suspension, so upper and lower control arms, hubs, brakes, so the turbo sport brakes. Uh, obviously being a rear-wheel drive MX-5, it allows me to um, run a rear-wheel drive. So um, coilovers, are Viking coilovers, they're, they're custom coilovers, but other than that, the rest is all MX-5 set up for the suspension. So it's all double wishbone now, I assume a factory Mini is obviously not. Um, so the subframes you've designed to just match those factory Miata or MX-5 pickup points? Yeah, 100%. So that when I've made the subframes, I literally picked up the exact same points of the, um, the MX-5 subframes. I had a couple of those lying around, so I literally measured them up, took the anti-dive measurements and everything out, uh, out of them and put them into the custom subframes. Yeah, perfect. All right, let's jump back into the engine. I guess uh, one of the main questions people have is what type of power is it making? Uh, so it's a stock engine, stock internals, stock turbo. Um, it is a 2.5 litre, so it runs a little bit more torque. It's got uh, Process West Intercool. It's about the only accessory on top of the Heltec gear that it's got in it. Um, and it's 250 horsepower at the wheels, but it's the 400 newton metres of torque in what is a 900 kilo car. So, yeah. So a pretty potent package for a street car. Yeah. 
Yeah, I worked it out off the ratios, and it works out to be a power to weight ratio is probably about a Porsche uh, Turbo 911, uh, 911 Turbo. Yeah. And engine in the back, so considerably more traction than before. No torques there, obviously. Yeah, no torques there, so it was good to get rid of that. But being a boxer, it sits just in front of the wheels. Uh, sorry, in front, yeah, in front of the wheels, which then being a boxer is quite low as the centre point of gravity. So it's really worked out a lot better than what I thought. I thought, you know, this could turn into crap for all I know, but it actually it's turned out so much better than, than I thought. And do you think handling-wise it's kind of at a better point than your VTEC powered Mini? Yeah, yeah, much better point. Obviously you can lose some traction in the rear wheels, but um, much better, much better. As long as you put some weight in the front, so if you put some more fuel in the front and add some weight there, um, it definitely handles a lot better than the uh, front wheel drive. And in terms of the electronics, I assume it's on a complete standalone. You mentioned Haltech just before. What ECU have we got running it? Yeah, so it's an Elite 2500 um, with a Haltech wideband, con um, wideband controller. Uh, it's got all the fuse box from Haltech as well and boost controller, air temp sensors. So a lot of it's from Haltech. Um, so yeah, actually, I absolutely love it because it's just so easy to use and so easy to tune uh, and work with. So. Yeah, and with the rest of the vehicle, it seems like you've kind of taken the resto mod approach, I'd say. Is a kind of custom sunroof. Any other features? Yeah, so one of my favourite features is the sunroof. It's out of an R53 Mini, um, so our the latest BMW Mini. So it's uh, something I wanted to put in there, just something I've always loved. So I've cut the sunroof out and welded it all in, so it's properly welded in. Um, bonnet itself is all uh, fabricated as well. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's um, yeah, all the bonnet's been fabricated. All the wheel arches have been fabricated. I've painted the whole thing at home in the garage, so it's literally just a one-man band and, and did all at home. I think, I think that's a key point, as you actually did 99% of this work all by yourself. Where did you pick up these skills? Oh, just over the years, growing up, working with the uh, with my dad and just teaching me how to do things when uh, you're working on cars. And, you know, you just learn to weld and you learn to um, basically just bend metal and move things around and give it a go is what I say. So have a crack and what's the worst that can go wrong? Yeah, and something interesting uh, that talking to you just before, you haven't used CAD on this build at all? No, no CAD, it's all up here in my head, you know, so it is literally just measure, you know, work out where your, um, your data points are and just, just go from there. Yeah. I mean, crack and get the results done and here you are. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, just really good build, real fun. It gets a lot of attention and, you know, I built it just to have a bit of fun and take it out, car shows and go for drives. So it's one thing I want to do. It's got to be able to be driven. Um, it's not a trailered car, so, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, if... It Thanks for that. Uh, if anyone wants to follow along with what you're doing and see more of the car, where are they best to do so? Yeah, so Dutchie's Garage on Instagram and um, Facebook, so you can see the whole build, you know, what it, what it started as and what it is today, and you know, any future builds that come up will all be on there as well. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks for your time. All right. Thanks, Connor. Cheers. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.